ready to go. Yes, cool. Okay, so hello. We are Jen and Rich, and we are from The Amazings. Um, we're here to do a little talk about doing good for non-do-gooders. Okay, so we are The Amazings. Um, so what we do is we turn the life skills of retired and retiring people into activities. So um, you could learn knitting off Bernadette or wild food foraging off Terry, retro hairstyling off Michael, anything that a kind of older person could sell as a skill. So our older people get to earn extra money, um, they get to meet new people, and uh, everyone that comes, which is kind of broadly people like you, um, get to kind of have that wisdom imparted and learn some sort of new skills. Um, and we are a social business, which is kind of what I'm going to talk about. Um, so we're, in a way, an answer to um, the way that society is changing, which is that um, we're getting older. In fact, um, more people are alive that are over 60 now than have ever been ever in the history of the world. Um, they are, with that comes increasing isolation. Um, and also the way that society is has changed a little bit. So we used to, used to grow up around our grandparents and our parents and their friends. Um, actually, I imagine you probably did grow up around your parents. But um, <laughs> you, uh, there used to be kind of like communities of multiple generations. And now as we kind of all move to the city to, uh, to go and earn our fortunes and go to fancy talks, um, we've moved away from that. And so that kind of intergenerational thing has, has um, passed on a bit. And also, as you get older now, um, you're older for much longer. So it's no longer kind of you get to 65, you've got five years of spending your kids' inheritance and having the best time ever, then five years of ill health and you die. Um, it goes on for uh, a lot longer, and everybody's got their faculties. And uh, what we saw was a huge amount of boredom and loads and loads of skills. So these kind of people are very often like the last of the manual generation. They can change... Um, plugs, they can um, put up um, pictures, they can make stuff, and uh, lots of things that I can't do. So we thought maybe we can turn that into um, something that they could sell, maybe we could monetize wisdom. But what I'm not going to do really is talk about um, the amazing lots and lots. Um, this isn't one sort of big advertisement. What I wanted to talk about was um, some of the things that we've come across, some of the challenges, and um, some, of the, uh, some of the things that surround what we do. So um, this is probably Alistair, I don't know. But um, <laughs> it's, it's um, what this kind of represents is that, um, that golden area of um, financial stability and sort of social value is where we want to get to. So um, this is the challenge of um, social um, and enterprise. And... Um, talk about some of the things that we've come across and prompt maybe a little discussion about that. So we have a social cause, but we are um, in business. Um, so sort of business has kind of got a bit of a bad name at the moment. It's, uh, it's bankers spraying champagne in each other's faces. Um, it is enormous businesses crushing weeny little independent shops, and um, it's all horrible. But it also probably pays your wages. Um, <laughs> Unlucky. Um, <laughs> the, um, the, but the kind of theory is a sound one. It's kind of what the Cold War was about a bit, um, which is that um, if consumers can buy what they want, you should get better products at a better price, and um, you should sort of preserve the things you love. So a uh, little experiment on the front. Who here has an uh, Apple-branded portable device? Um, if you could put it up and maybe... Wave it around like you literally don't care. <laughs> it feels like a Jamie Cullum concert here. Um, that is evidence to the fact that um, why Apple has uh, got the highest market capitalization of any company in the world, because people buy it. Um, and if you did, didn't buy it, um, it would go out of business, as very nearly happened in sort of 2001. Um, so just making a very simple point, if you preserve what you buy, um, so this is a very highly scientific scale, um, and it's talking about what drives purchases. So there are lots of people, and I'm very glad that they exist, for whom good or sort of ethics and values 
is the fundamental reason why they buy things. They buy things because they are recyclable and recycled and um, incredibly responsibly resourced. And that is represented here by the mung beans end of the scale. Um, it's not the driver for everybody. And so whilst you might think it's a nice to have that something's incredibly well sourced, you very often tend to buy things because basically they're cool, they are the cheapest, um, they are the most premium, or they are unique. And so good isn't necessarily that much of a driver. Um, so um, what we wanted to say is that in, in our experience, um, some of the things that we've come across um, with, with good kind of being at the heart of our business, because we are sort of for profit and we are um, um, with a very social cause. So um, when we talk to people about amazing, they go, oh, that's, that's a lovely idea. You know, I really, oh, my dad could do that. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Um, yeah, I'd really like to do that. When you explain that you're for profit, sometimes, not always, sometimes it changes. Um, and quite literally, we've had doors closed on venues. Now, absolutely not universally, but it has happened. Um, and that's quite interesting um, because it's almost like there's a perception that things make money and there's things that do good. And those things that do good are not for profits and they're charities um, and they're voluntary things. And um, we think that if, as we're seeing, the way you buy things is what preserve what exists, then businesses are going to have to become better, and that's partly going to come from government regulation, but it's also going to come from consumers. So the way that we um, buy things has to perhaps go beyond what's coolest, what's cheapest, what looks best. Um, so perhaps those doors should open a little bit. So we want to talk about some people that do do that. They do make money, but they do do things that are good and fantastic. So uh, this is Tom's Shoes. Um, they're on the west coast of America. Um, very simple idea, which is that uh, it's kind of one for one. You buy a pair of Tom's Shoes, they will give them to um, somebody that wouldn't necessarily wear well to buy a pair of shoes, so somebody in the developing world. One Water does the same thing. You buy bottled water to... Um, take on the tube, they will provide water to people that need it in the developing world. And um, who here has heard of Just Giving? I'm sure it's quite a familiar thing. You all look like you've probably run marathons at some point. Um, you'd think maybe, do you think it's not for profit? For profit? Um, well, it is for profit. And they take, uh, they have a turnover of a million pounds a day. Um, within a year, that's projected to be a billion pounds a week. Is that bad? Well, I would argue it's not, because they're saving charities an awfully large amount of money. They're making charities an awfully large amount of money. When you click that box that says, I am a UK resident, please put 25% tax relief, they're integrated with the inland revenue, which means that, that money is going straight back to the charity. And so, really, that's a kind of challenge, that idea that for good and for profit are quite separate things. Um, so, good is all very good. Um, by that I mean that if that's at the core of what you do, then that's nice. But people aren't necessarily going to buy it for that reason, back to the mung, mung bean scale. So we as a companies have a duty to um, appeal to those sort of fundamental drivers of what's cheapest, what's most premium, what's unique, and what's the coolest. Um, but it also, which is why if you ever go to the Amazing's website, um, you know, we haven't got um, gleaming, dentured, perfectly happy uh, older people riding bikes in centre parks. It's kind of real people that are doing um, real things, and it's got that sort of authenticity about it. So there's, there's a role for us as companies with sort of a social purpose to cater to those other needs, which is kind of why people buy things. But... But, yes, uh, there's also a role for the consumer. That is you. <laughs> um, if we want to make the world a little bit better, we have to consume a bit better. Um, and that means thinking about how and what we consume. So how do we consume? Well, The Amazings is a digital business, so um, let's have a look at things that way. Um, so this is a tweet. I hope you can all see it. I'll read it out. Um, that came up on my feed on Saturday when I was uh, looking through Twitter. It's someone I know. And um, she is making pillowcase dresses for kids in Uganda that don't have enough clothes. 
pretty cool. Um, so I saw this, and she's asking people to retweet. Now, I can sew, but I am busy and lazy. And um, I just don't really have time to make these dresses. So I thought, well, I'll retweet it. Um, because retweeting is sharing. Sharing raises awareness. That's a good thing, right? Um, if we all did that, all we do is retweet. Not a lot's going to happen. So um, I'd like to kind of test this a little bit further. Um, there are six types of consumers online. There are creators, uh, there are critics, collectors, joiners, spectators, and inactives. So uh, I'm going to throw this out to you guys. Who here writes a blog, uh, creates video content and puts it on YouTube, comments on blogs, chats their mates on Twitter, on Facebook, um, pulls in RSS feeds, tags stuff online? Hands up. Yeah, cool, good, this is good. Um, okay, who here just has a social profile, does a few status updates, and reads stuff online? Okay, that's good, okay. So, um, so most of you think you're active online, that's, that's what you think, cool. Actually, people in our age group, 25 to 30 year olds, sorry if you're uh, out of that, but most of you are joiners, and most of you are spectators, now that, actually means you're not that active. Um, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, and it's obviously a bit of a generalization. Um, and after all, there has to be people to read the stuff that the 21% of creators are doing. So, cool. But I just want to pitch to you, what if we all went just a little bit further with one thing we care about and love? So for me, I love handmade, I love craft. Really, I should be getting on my sewing machine this weekend and making one of those pillowcase dresses. Um, if we all did this, we'd start heading in the right direction. Um, so in very, very simple terms, kind of your, your wallet is your weapon. So what we're just saying is that um, if the, the way in which um, society is changing, we are in a kind of Western society here, um, your ability to pay for what you preserve, kind of back to that Apple point, is very, very significant. And that might be with sort of time and um, with money. Now, um, no talk of this nature is complete without a Gandhi quote. Um, it is probably um, the best quote ever, apart from vanilla ice, anything less than the best is a felony. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's be the change you want to see in the world. And um, you probably all heard it, but the most tangible form of how you do that is actually um, probably some consciousness of, of, uh, of where your money goes and um, how you kind of um, vote with your wallet. So we just wanted to leave an idea sort of with you, which is this, which is um, you see lots of stuff um, every day. You see more than anyone in history has ever seen, um, and there's more ways for you to see it from Facebook to Twitter to Pinterest to ad advertising bombardment to all of these sorts of things. And you'll see some stuff that's lovely. Um, and this idea that we just sort of like to leave with you is um, pay for respect. If you really think that what someone's doing is fantastic, um, and that doesn't need to necessarily mean that it's utterly sort of um, ethically driven. It just might be something, you know, beautifully designed bit of furniture. Um, pay for that respect, either with your time or with your money, um, because you preserve what you buy. Um, and that couldn't be more evident here in that where you spend your money is um, what continues. So it might potentially go to Terry, Wild Food Forager, Expertise, or, or perhaps to Ollie. It's uh, up to you. Okay. Um, right, one last thing before we take questions. Um, I would really like you guys to do one thing right now. Um, I hope I've kind of spurred you on. Please, can you get your phones out, everyone that got their iPhones out, and your Blackberries if you've not got an iPhone, uh, whatever you've got. And please open up your email app and email us at info at theamazings.com and tell us the name of someone amazing in your life and tell us what they're good at. So whilst you're getting your phones out, please do it. Um, I'm going to clarify what an amazing is for us. An amazing is somebody who is over 50 and they are incredibly skilled or passionate about something. Um, they don't have to play the ukulele, they don't have to uh, teach underwater hockey, uh, they don't have to be completely bonkers though it helps, um, but um, they can just be really good at gardening or knitting or cooking an awesome pie, so it really doesn't matter. Um, 
Yeah, so if you email us, info at amazing.com, um, we will follow up with you and them and really hope to kind of cheesily help make the world a little bit more amazing. Thank you. Thank you.